Hi, I'm G, this is my art channel, and this is my ProMarker drawing of a dandelion jellyfish. And as with all things, all my fantasy drawings start with a rough sketch in my sketch pad that then I drew up onto a piece of bristle ball paper and I inked out with Letraset fine liners ready to colour. And I used a bunch of green colours for this, but I'll list them all in the description below. So I started with a couple of small parts of the tentacles just to make sure all the colours were going to work all right. And the first colour that I'm putting on is leaf green. And this is a part of a tentacle that has twisted and you're actually seeing the dark underside of it. Um, so what I could do is just go straight in with my dark colours, but I don't like to do that. I like to put on all the colours that I'm using for the light areas, but layer them up. So I'm putting on grass green now as well. And then I switch up to another darker marker, which is forest green. So I'm gradually layering up these colours of green uh, in an effort to try and get it, you know, a nice rich colour, but also so it's dark enough. And then I go in with a little bit of lush green and I start using the lush green just to add a little bit of extra dark to where this kind of part of this tentacle would twist, uh, you know, twist around and then show the light side of itself. So that's how I do the dark areas. For the light areas, it's the same colors. So I start off putting on the leaf green, first of all, as a kind of nice light base color. Uh, and then once I've got that on, I start putting some shadow areas in with the grass green. So I'm just sort of putting in, it's kind of a medium green, just giving myself an idea of where the darker areas are going to be. Then I blend the edge of that using the leaf green. So I'm going back in with the leaf green. Then I start adding some darker bits again using the forest green. So I'm just putting this over the edge of the grass green, but not too much. Um, but it's making a bit of a line, so I then flip back to the grass green and move along the edge of where grass green and forest green meet in an effort to try and blend them together. And then a last little bit of blending with leaf green. So I'm actually using those colors all the way through once and then using them again just to gradually blend the edges in. So I'm not left with any drying lines with my markers. I've got a nice smooth blend where one color changes to another color. Now that might seem a kind of a quite time-consuming method of, of doing your color blends, but once you get into the hang of it, once you get into the groove of it, it's actually pretty quick. And you've got all the pens in your hands and you're just like, you know, flicking between each one each time to kind of like add that color that you need uh, so that you can get these nice smooth kind of blends of color. Uh, I could have done it with um, layers by putting a light color on, then waiting, then putting the medium color on, then waiting, and so on. But of course you do get that line, you get that edge, where one color changes to another. And I wanted this to have a much more smooth, uh, gradual change to the colors. So how did I know what colors I was gonna use and whether they were gonna work? Well, that is what the rough drawing that I showed you at the start of the video was all about. I did all of my testers and I put out all of the colors of green that I might wanna use on that piece of paper and then tried them. So I tried, you know, two or three different combos of different greens. And actually later on, you'll see me using some different greens to do the long stem of this dandelion jellyfish. Uh, and I should just explain where the idea for this came about. Uh, I was out and uh, with my daughter and she was picking flowers. And of course, we picked up a dandelion and, you know, blew all the little spores off of it. And you're just left with that kind of like bald head of a dandelion. And I just noticed that that looked kind of like the top of a jellyfish and all the little green kind of um, leaves that were hanging down look kind of like the tentacles and the idea kind of stuck with me from that I took photos of them and uh, you know eventually when I had the time I thought oh, I'll give this a shot uh, and as you know from looking at my channel most of the time I don't do a lot of fantasy drawing I do a lot of um, you know realistic stuff and flowers and so on um, so this was a little bit of a departure for me and it's always difficult doing fantasy stuff because um, in a way, yes, there's no rules. It's fantasy. You kind of do what you want to. But also, because you don't really have too much reference to go on, it's kind of, um, you know, there's a little bit of it being in the lap of the gods. And, and sometimes it, you know, you're a bit worried it's not going to quite work. It's not going to be convincing. Uh, and it's just, it's outside my usual comfort zone. So, you know, I was just hopeful that this was going to flow and it was going to work. And that was, of course, the point of doing the reference sketch, um, the, the sketch in my sketchbook. So I had an idea, I had a little bit more confidence going forwards with this because I tried out a few ideas there and I was like, yeah, I think I can make this work. Um, there were still a few little things that I was kind of just deciding upon as I went along and, and kind of just improvised as I went along. Uh, and I really enjoy doing it. So I'm going to maybe do some more fantasy stuff because I do have some ideas in my head for some more fantasy stuff. 
So here we go with this bit which I said where I would use different greens and the stalk, the actual stalk which would normally go into the ground for a dandelion, uh, I thought I would do in different greens, uh, brighter, yellowier greens. So I decided to start with a base of lime green this time uh, and then start using some bright green. And I wanted the stalk to be paler and lighter, so I just used three greens here. I'm going in with forest green as my darkest green, uh, and then I'll blend that in with a little bit of the bright green, so just blending along the edge there so that they blend together a little bit better. Putting a little bit more forest green in because I'm realizing this is the darkest I'm going to get here. I'm not using the lush green like I did on the other tentacles. And the, the reason for that is because I wanted the stalk to have depth, yeah, light and dark, but I didn't want it to have the same amount of dark shadows as perhaps the tentacles have got. Uh, and I felt that using a kind of like uh, paler yellowier greens here, but also slightly less deep shadows would help it stand out. And you'd be able to see that, they, oh, this is a different thing to all the kind of like those twirling, twirling tentacles that you can see. And the stalk is also different from the tentacles in that um, it is a tube. Yeah, I know you can see the end of the tube I'm working on here as though it's kind of split into four and each of those four pieces are kind of like, you know, floating outwards. But it's a tube. So I had to think about how the light would affect um, a tube, both the insides of the tube, but also the outside being a curved surface. So what I'm trying to do here as I build up all of my colors from lime to bright to forest is to try, you know, before I've even thought about adding highlights with any pens, I'm trying to give it a bit of depth and to give it the feel of being a cylinder or a tube just using the colors that I've got. Now I'm obviously using the fine tip to do this bit of coloring. Yes, there is a chisel tip on the other end of the pro markers, uh, but that's good for big areas. You know, if I did that here, I'd be worried that I would be going outside of the lines or all over the place because the chisel tip is so thick. So here I am, I'm moving upwards using a bright green now on top of the line. And as I get towards this top bit, I, I suddenly move and curve across. So I've left a little light bit as I was going up, but as I curve up and go across with the forest green here, what I'm hoping to show there is that the changing of light, that the light hitting the top of this tube here, but as it then curves around, there's a bit of shadow and then the light hits it as it starts to curve down and around. That's what I was hoping to achieve with the way that I've colored that. Um, like I said, I wanted to try and achieve that before I even thought about adding anything like, you know, white jelly roll or white Posca pen later. These three colors, lime bright and forest green, were really, really good combination of colors. And I got to admit, as I was doing this and, and finishing off the stalk and the, the stem, I started to think, oh, maybe I should have used these to do all of the tentacles with as well, because it's such a lovely bright green. But, you know, I was good with the fact that I had the kind of contrast between a kind of a paler green and this a much warmer yellowy green. So with pretty much all the tentacles done, I could turn my attentions to the, the body, the head of the jellyfish. Not quite sure. But anyway, when you look down through the top of the jellyfish and it's see-through, you can usually see this kind of like ring pattern on the top of it. And I wanted my dandelion jellyfish to have that. So I decided what I would do in the center of each of those rings, because it would be pale, would start with an even paler green, meadow green, and then put a little bit of leaf green in the middle, and then just gently blend it in. So that's what I did for the kind of like centers. Then I decided to use exactly the same colors to actually do the body or the head. Uh, so I started off with a base of meadow green, and then put leaf green on top of that. And then I decided that I would blend a little bit of that in and then start using the grass green. So I'm already on my third color now, as you can see me working down, before I get to now forest green. So it's gradually getting darker and darker and darker towards the base. And I'm going to finish it off with a bit of lush green, just very, very finely. And the idea is that this head or body of the jellyfish is going to be the light source. It's going to be almost glowing. So I wanted it to kind of go from light to dark. So once I'd rubbed out those pencil lines and you can, you know, get a feel for those rings and that glowing body, I just then did a few little bits of shadow across stalks and tentacles before I started putting the background in. So for the background, I am using a chisel tip. And the reason for this is when you use a chisel tip, it throws out so much more ink than the fine tip. You get a kind of unevenness to the way that you're doing your work, unless, of course, you keep going over and over in order to make it even. I deliberately didn't do that because I wanted the background to look uneven because 
then it would kind of look a little bit like, um, you know, the underwater, the undersea kind of effect where you get light filtering through and some patches look darker or lighter than others. So that was a deliberate reason to use the chisel tip. Also, it was a nice big area of color. So using the chisel tip just made sense. But it could have gone for a very even background if I decided to use the fine tip and just gone back and forth, back and forth, layering it up. But I preferred the kind of almost sort of undulating tones and, and you know, sort of darkish to lightish effect that I got by using the, the chisel tips here. And now you can see me actually start to go in there and start putting in some little bits of highlight with the jelly roll pen, but also using the markers to go around the outline edges of everything to give it a darker edge. There's enough of a contrast anyway between the, the jellyfish and the background, because I've used quite dark colors for the background, but I still wanted it to sort of um, pop out a little bit, you know, sort of come forwards a little bit. And the way that I decided to do that was to put this kind of dark outline around um, all of the, the shape of the jellyfish and its tentacles. And pretty much all I did was take the color of the background that I'd already used and just do an outline edge around everything with that same color. So it was basically layering up the same color twice in order to achieve uh, a kind of a dark line. And then I would start adding my um, highlighter pen using jelly roll i mean you've always seen me put a couple of little bits in because i do work in a slightly haphazard kind of way sometimes and I, I my focus goes a bit strange and my concentration goes and i start you know going oh I'll, you know flip back between a bit of fine liner and a little bit of marker and stuff so yeah i don't work always in a, a structured way as perhaps i should but here you can see me going in now i've done all my outlines and i'm beginning to put in um highlighter area so choosing that that jellyfish's body or head as the light source and then deciding to go right if that's a light source where would the light where would there be shiny highlights on this jellyfish and that's what you can see me doing with the jelly roll pen going in and putting those white areas now on all of those edges that I think would be catching the light if the jellyfish's body was the light source. I do sort of defy my own logic here though because the tentacles that you can see that are long enough to touch the very edge of the actual picture frame are sort of deliberated, you know, oh, should I should I completely do them white like you can see me deciding to do or should I just do them white where the light source would be hitting them? And I decided to make them stand out enough, what I would do is make them have a white edge all the way from the edge of the paper through to where they join the rest of the tentacles. I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do. It was pretty much just a judgment call on my part. Then the thing that I decided to do was show the underside of the tentacles as though they had suckers on them. And for this, I just went and used um, both the 0.1 fine liner pen and the actual white jelly roll pen to try and show that where one of these tentacles was twisting and you were seeing the underside of it, that it would have this kind of um, spirally kind of effect on there to suggest the kind of suckers uh, that would be on the underside of a jellyfish's tentacles. That was the idea anyway. Now with the jellyfish pretty much finished, I turned my attention to the background and I tried out an idea in my sketchbook to do with bubbles. So I thought I would put the bubbles in and add a little bit of extra something to the background. The same way that I did the lines around everything, I just used the same pen that I'd used on the background previously so that I would get a darkish looking um, shape of some bubbles. The other thing I wanted to do was put in these shapes in the background with the white jelly roll pen because they linked to the dandelion because they look like dandelion spores. Uh, and then I also thought what I would do is add some extra bubbles that were kind of highlighted bubbles in the background. And I chose a green Posca pen here because the green linked to the overall color of the jellyfish. Then all I had to do was sign it. So there you go, the finished piece, Dandelion Jellyfish. I had a lot of fun doing this. So if you liked it, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, and leave me a comment below. Uh, if you want to see me doing any more fantasy work like this rather than realistic, then again, leave a comment below. And if you want to see any more ProMarker work, I've done some other ProMarker videos, so I'll put the links for those below. And um, you can go check them out and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.